When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, 15 new countries were created. This massive union of different republics comprised nations as vastly different as Turkmenistan and Latvia, but Russia is still pretty big today. I mean, it borders both Norway and North Korea, and has a surprising amount of diversity within those borders. So just how big and diverse is Russia? Brought to you by generous support from viewers like you on Patreon. Thank you. In the West, we generally tend to view Russia as one big, monolithic, all-Slavic country. And for those of us who know a little bit more about Russian geography, we still think of Russia as one big, monolithic, all-Slavic country, but where almost all the people live in about a quarter of its land area, leaving the brave, crazy frontiersmen to populate the rest of... nowhere. Except Russia is very, very big, and even though 110 million of its 143 million people live in the European parts of the country, that still leaves over 30 million people across Siberia. This is tiny by most standards, especially in Asia, but that doesn't mean that there isn't still a crazy amount of cultural diversity here. So Russia's not just the Slavic life that you see on Life of Boris, Russia is also populated by various Turkic, Caucasian, Uralic, Mongolic, and other various different people groups. Now, Russia is made up of 85 total federal subjects, which is basically the catch-all term for all these different subdivisions. You see, like how the US has states and territories, each with different powers and authorities, Russia has different types of subdivisions depending on the needs of that particular area. First off, Russia has 46 oblasts, which are basically just like regular old states. Nothing too special except more Slavic. There are also autonomous oblasts. Well, just one, the Jewish Autonomous Oblast, whose population is only 0.1% Jewish because it turns out we don't all live on the Chinese border. The next type are the Nine Krais. The term Krai was used historically for the frontiers in the borderlands, much like Ukraina, which has always been kind of sandwiched between Russia and the rest of Europe. However, nowadays, they're essentially just like regular oblasts, and many of them don't even touch an international border. There are also four autonomous okrugs, basically autonomous districts but with a somewhat substantial ethnic minority, and three cities of federal importance. No, really, that's what they're called. And they are Moscow, St. Petersburg, and the newest one added to the list, Sevastopol. Finally, we have the republics, our main focus in this video. In terms of different cultures, this is the juicy part of Russia, as republics are entitled to two things that ordinary oblasts, okrugs, and the like aren't, which are their own constitutions and official languages other than Russian. This is because the 22 republics were made for individual people groups that all have very different histories, cultures, and languages from the Russian majority, even if Russians are the majority population in their territory. Oh, and they even have their own anthems. Okay, now for the cultural stuff. Grouping the more than 20 non-Slavic ethnic groups represented by a republic into neat little language families, we get five different families that we can look a little bit into. Caucasian, Mongolic, Turkic, Uralic, and Iranian. Also, we can mostly avoid the whole Crimea issue here, since Crimea is a republic, but wasn't actually made into one with a specific ethnic group in mind. So please, put your torches down. Let's talk about the Caucasian republics first. And no, I don't just mean white people, I mean people of the Caucasus. The republics here being Adygea, Chechnya, Ingushetia, kabardino balkaria and karachay Cherkessia, represented the Adygea, Chechens, Ingush, and Kabardians. No surprise, all these groups live just north of the Caucasus Mountains, arguably one of the most linguistically diverse mountain ranges in the world. Yeah, take that, Alps! Aside from the Azeris and Armenians in the area, there are also three Caucasian groups, being the Northwest and Northeast Caucasians and the Carvelians, a group which includes Georgian. These three language families are all actually completely different from each other, being three of the world's primary language families, you know, like Indo-European, Afroasiatic, etc. Next are Borgatia and Kalmykia, who speak Mongolic languages. Not surprisingly, Borgatia borders Mongolia, and the two are said to have very similar cultures. But interestingly, Kalmykia is all the way over by the Caucasus Republics, this is the result of a migration that happened in the early 17th century. The Kalmyks are actually a subset of Oira Mongols, which is a different group from the Khalkha Mongols seen in Mongolia, who migrated westwards throughout Kazakhstan and into modern-day Russia, briefly establishing the Kalmyk Khanate. The Turkic peoples are a very widespread group, 
comprising of people such as the Turks in Turkey, the Azeris, Uzbeks, Cossacks, and Uyghurs. However, in Russia, they make up the majority groups of Altai, Bashkortostan, Chuvashia, Karachay Cherkessia again, Khakassia, Yakutia or Sakha, Tatarstan, and Tuva or Tana Tuva. Tana Tuva no, no. never Tana dies. Tuva is My bad, Tana Tuva. It is the most Tana powerful Tuva. and glorious. Tana Tuva will Tana take Tuva over the world. The next Tana Tuva is a superpower. Why is Liechtenstein not here? Okay, okay, enough, enough. The Turkic peoples are also very diverse, especially religiously, with different groups practicing everything from Sunni Islam to Eastern Orthodoxy to various shaman beliefs. I mean, when you have about 160 million people spread all across Asia for thousands of years, that does kind of make sense. Next are the Uralic peoples. Possibly their most well-known groups are the people of Hungary, Estonia, and Finland, as well as the Sami people. So this might not initially seem like all that big of a group, until you realize just how many groups there are on the other side of the Russian border. Russia also has the republics of Karelia, Komi, Mariel, Mordovia, and Odmortia. The Uralic peoples have actually lived in these areas around the northernmost areas of Europe and Asia for possibly over 7,000 years, and have branched off into numerous different groups and cultures, with the most widespread around Russia being of the Samoyeda group, including groups like the Nenets, Yenets, Lanasans, and Selkups. To wrap it all up, we will talk about two more republics. First, Dagestan, which is an incredibly diverse republic made up of Avars, Dargins, Komiks, Lesgins, Laks, Azeris, Tabasarans, and Chechens. But no one ethnic group makes up more than 30% of the republic's population of 2.9 million. Also, it's worth talking about the one republic for a people group that speaks an Indo-European language. You know of the controversial separatist region in Georgia called South Ossetia? Okay, probably not, but for those who have, have you ever wondered where North Ossetia is? Well, North Ossetia Alania is on the other side of the Russian border. These areas make up a group called the Ossetians, who are an Iranian ethnic group with ties to the Caucasus Mountains. So that's a rough overview of just how diverse Russia really is. In fact, there are so many other ethnic groups spread all around Russia, but these are just the ones with their own republics. The republics themselves were established by Lenin in 1922 as the Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republics, and during the 1920s were encouraged to celebrate their own cultures. But in the 30s, Stalin kind of turned everything around, instead purging non-Russians from governments and mandating the Russian language all around the Soviet Union. With the breakup of the Soviet Union, however, the fate of the ASSRs weren't completely certain, resulting in everything from independence referendums in Tatarstan to a major conflict in Chechnya that you might have heard about. The republics were never entitled to independence from Russia, but yeah, things are actually still kind of complicated. I think that's enough political talk for now. See ya! Thank you as always for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or even want to see more of these videos from me in the future, do please let me know. Perhaps a video on a country like India wouldn't be a bad idea. Anyway, please be sure to like, share, and support us on Patreon, and subscribe to learn something new about our world every Sunday.